there was never a question about what post I would apply for, but it, would, it was certainly a question of how, um, how it would fit. You know, there was one institution I, was, I sent an application off to, for example, who didn't even have a music department. And I was thinking, how would that work research-wise? And, and realistically, it was not going to work for me. I did need uh, somewhere which has a, a good music research department as well. So that, that balance um, uh, came into play in the, in, the, in the interview process or the application process. Um, but I was always able to market myself as a, as a French poetry yeah. specialist. But they will have to make the case, probably, uh, that, they, that they can operate within one department. I was looking particularly at transferable skills and thinking about how they matched up. And one of the most useful things I think I did during my PhD was I attended a week-long UK graduate course that was um, open to anyone who had AHRC funding. They did a whole day on that course about kind of targeting your CV and doing your covering letter and applying for jobs and they were very good because it was completely geared towards people doing PhDs but they were looking both at academic jobs and non-academic jobs and I think that really helped me write a CV that was where I um, was able to bring out my transferable skills and in particular my research and analytical skills rather than um, rather than just thinking this is my discipline and I have to apply for a job in this. If you're applying for jobs and you're not you feel that you could fit in in a number of areas or you feel that your research could cross over into a number of you could use your skills and your research could cross over into a number of areas then I think it's very important when you're applying for jobs to put a lot of effort into a lot of effort into the covering letter and a lot of effort into the CV and really make sure they match up with what's being asked for because if you don't map exactly onto the person's specification then you could end up putting in things that are irrelevant because they think they're important to you or, or not proving that you have the skills to do the job. So I think especially if you're applying, especially if you're applying to work on an existing project, so as a, as a postdoc, I think it's really important to demonstrate how you match up to the job specification almost more than it is if you're applying for a, for a lectureship, say, where the important thing is to show that um, where perhaps it's more important to show your own skills and your own potential and your own interests. It was advantageous in the sense that um, I had more strings to my bow and also I mean the institution I've ended up in at, at, at Bangui University is a relatively small department um, and it's, it just works really well in terms of how we interact uh, between the different, the different departments. Um, to, to get the get the mixture uh, going, it was a huge a huge bonus for that for that post, yeah. Um, and I and I probably bigged it up an awful lot more than than I I, I did in other applications yeah. uh, for other institutions. Yeah, it's interesting because on the whole, I think probably they do end up having to choose, and they do find that there aren't all that many jobs that are completely geared to that particular combination. There will occasionally be jobs that are absolutely geared to their combination and then they're very likely to get them. And I still have a sort of feeling that very often a job has your name on it and, and again just to do my own experience a little bit that having done two languages equally up to that level um, out of the four or so jobs I've ever got two of them really required those two languages to be in parallel so I think that may happen but the student obviously has to expect to go in for jobs which aren't an exact fit to their field and to make choices.